Hi guys, KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila, where we are working to inspire positive, radical social evolution by uniting mission-driven humans. I'm so excited to be with you today. I am welcoming Aaron Brill and Manny Menendez from Lions Pride Fitness. This is a CrossFit community for those in and returning from incarceration. It's a relatively new organization, but they are making incredible strides fast and really working to disrupt a larger system that's been in play for over 200 years that needs some major updates. This is very much about the human spirit and changing the way we look at one another and getting back to a sense of community, a sense of pride, and just elevating ourselves all the way around. And of course, fitness is a big key, so you know I'm a fan. Uh, but this is a really great story. If you're a person, an entrepreneur, or anyone that's looking to seek out community for a cause and help humanity as a whole, this is a conversation for you. Have a great day. Be sure to check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Cheers. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm excited to be here today. It is cold in Colorado and we have three humans that are in Colorado with me. So we're all in this together, but we're about to heat it up with this conversation and positive vibrations because we have fit fam in the house, which, you know, uh, is are one of my favorite categories. Anytime it's, um, someone doing fitness and we've become friends over the years, you know, they're mission driven humans doing the darn thing. So I have two varsity rock stars. I'm going to welcome to the mic. They are the well, founder and a leader within Lions Pride Fitness. And Lions Pride Fitness is a, a CrossFit community for those in uh, those in and returning from incarceration. Uh, with over five years experience in building CrossFit programs inside prison, we want to continue that community success outside. Their mission is we exist to bring the full person wellness of CrossFit combined with peer and community mentorship to the justice system involved JSI population. So this is really cool. These guys are out there on the front lines. Uh, we've got Aaron Brill. He's a former police officer and now he's the president of Lions Pride Fitness. And we have got his partner, uh, Manny Menendez. He is the leader and he sounds like he's the leader in between um, the veteran. He works on the board of Lions Pride Fitness. I'm going to give you, I'm going to let them do their full bio, but these guys are <laughs> the front lines of doing this program. They've built it from the ground up. So without further ado, why don't you guys give us a quick uh, intro on yourselves and, and why we, how we got into this? Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks, Kristen, for having us uh, on here today. So, known you for years and, and watched you uh, grow up with the TNT podcast. So that's been uh, fun to watch. It's still a rock the shirt at workouts and stuff. So hey. fun, <laughs> fun to be on it. Um, so yeah, Aaron Brill, uh, 25 year veteran of law enforcement. I did 22 the last 22 years were in Denver, uh, police academy instructor, which is how I got into CrossFit. Um, which that path led me interestingly into prison to. Uh, start another program, not this one, but another one that was uh, purely for incarcerated uh, people. It, it started off with me working out with some guys. Uh, uh, a son of a friend was incarcerated and, and wanted to turn himself around and improve the community inside prisons. Uh, through CrossFit, he had seen enough about it to, to kind of recognize what that looked like. So went in, worked out with the guys, met them, worked out with them, um, and then we just started going. We had no intention of turning it into what it turned into, but uh, that program is called Redemption Road Fitness Foundation and Redemption Road CrossFit. And it grew to be, and it's still it's still going. It's still uh, still a great program. We just split off to do uh, uh, similar but different work. That thing grew to be in five had five CrossFit affiliates inside of prisons. I think they've grown even more since uh, I left at the end of 2021. Um, but we saw a need to work in the reintegration space. People getting out of prison. Um, the, so the, the insight program was great. Then we had, uh, if we had time, I can tell a story of kind of what broke my heart and, and built it towards doing this particular work. So end of 2021, um, half the board, five of us left to start Lions Pride Fitness, um, to, to be more specialized on work in the reintegration space. We still help with some, uh, CrossFit programs behind bars, but Mostly we're working into reintegration, halfway houses and transitional housing and guys that are fully released, um, whatever they just need uh, or want to continue or just get introduced into CrossFit. Uh, it's done inside and in the reintegration space. What it does at every CrossFit gym around the world is build community and build 
uh, relationships and healthy lifestyles and which starts to get into your mental health and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's how we got going. I retired from law enforcement, uh, in February of last year, 20, whatever that was, 22, felt like two or three years combined. Um, but, yeah, uh, and have a little more uh, bandwidth to pursue this work now. And then, um, Manny was in our program at Sterling and I'll let him kind of talk about his role with us. Yeah. So, um, so I'm Manny Menendez, a U.S. Army veteran. Um, did seven years in the Army, got retired out for some injuries from uh, deployments. Uh, and then I, I kind of went down a, a path where I was kind of looking for that those military ways again, right? That structure, that discipline, that camaraderie, I kind of lost that, right? And uh, got out, got my bachelor's degree, and uh, and unfortunately got into a little trouble. I was, I was uh, trying to find that adrenaline in all the wrong places. So uh, – I have some lived experience. I did almost five years uh, in Sterling uh, Correctional Facility and then uh, some time, obviously, in county jail. I uh, won my appeals, and I was recently released here uh, in the summer of uh, 2022. And uh, and I've just been on fire for this work. I, I love I love what we do through CrossFit, uh, just seeing what it does in that space uh, inside and how it breaks a lot of those uh, barriers that are deep-rooted in that community for so long, and, and it breaks a lot of those barriers. And it's a really uh, special thing to watch um, men um, really break those barriers and have, uh, you know, almost therapy through these workouts. And uh, and I, I'd say it saved my life. It gave me a lot of structure and discipline, camaraderie. And like Aaron said, just that connection again. Um, and, and that's why I'm really passionate about doing a lot of this work. I'm a CFL one trainer and I'm uh, the military and uh, VA vet rep for Alliance Pride Fitness. And uh, we also run parallel with a with a program that uh, help me and my wife help bring here to the prison system called Veterans Healing Veterans. And, uh, and what it is is a narration-based therapy program for veterans. We advocate for the almost 200,000 incarcerated veterans. And uh, and we run uh, this program parallel with that um, because it's a series of writing prompts. It's narration-based therapy where we're helping guys reprocess a lot of their traumas. So it doesn't impact uh, their lives in a negative manner like it like it did a lot of times ending them up in these places. So we run it up. Uh, we have them do a writing prompt. And usually afterwards, we're doing some kind of uh, – CrossFit workout or yoga session afterwards to just uh, have that healthy outlet and that release and really start kind of programming and condition those healthy outlets at, a, at an early phase uh, while they're in prison because it just translates so beautifully out here if you just continue that structure and that discipline. And it's so important. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's it's pretty incredible how um, I don't know if you guys are religious or spiritual or whatever, however we label it. But it's funny how the path we weave kind of leads us without us even knowing onto the right things like, you know, talk about being incarcerated. I mean, had that not happened, do you feel like you would be where you are today? Oh, no, that's what I tell people. I think uh, it's a blessing. I really found my faith, my fitness, my family again. And uh it's like I tell people, I went through the mess and now I had the message. I went through the test and now I had the testimony. And it's such a huge blessing. Uh, you know, like I said, I won my appeal. So so that, that time didn't go wasted. It's a, I'm, it's very invaluable that I finally found my mission and my purpose. And I'm walking in my path exactly like you said. It took some bumps and bruises, but <laughs> it's a huge blessing now that we're, we're on that on that solid road. I'm in. It, yeah, it's crazy. So I always tell like my young people when I can, I'm like, because, you know, everyone's like, I'm going to college here and I'm going to do this. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, <laughs> call me in five years when you let me know how your your perfect plan shook out. And the beauty, I think, is kind of the mess. It's really hard when you're in the thick of it. And I certainly wouldn't compare anyone's journey to my own or vice versa. Like you, everyone's kind of walking their own path. But it's just kind of amazing that we do have that one thing in common where, you know, the mess does really provide the message. And it, it sometimes it I always say it hits my it takes my varsity humans along because we'll fix it we'll try harder we'll train more we'll eat different we'll do we will do it our way until it fully breaks us down and then you see the light and then there's kind of like this breakdown breakthrough but I'm, I'm i am curious so you know we kind of aaron you're coming off of law enforcement i mean you're coming out of the military and i know it sounds like you kind of had something leading you towards this but aaron what really like inspired you to be like okay I think this can be a thing. I see how much CrossFit specifically has impacted my life. <clears throat> what was the transition of bringing that into, um, you know, the prison or the jail system? Because CrossFit is kind of still like, it's it's more popular, now, but it's still kind of a unique training and it gets a lot of rap about being like a cult. Like, how did you get people that maybe weren't exposed to it to embrace such a thing? Yeah. Uh, it, so in 2017, that's when I first went into Lyman prison. I said, I didn't have a plan for all this. Um, uh, a police officer, a friend of mine, son was incarcerated. Um, and uh, Kevin, my my cop buddy, just reached out saying, hey, my son uh, has really turned himself around. Here's a bunch of paperwork from his caseworker. And 
Um, he, he knows what CrossFit can do community wise. Would you be willing to talk to him? And, and, I mean, talk about spirit, spirituality. I'm a Christian. And this isn't a faith-based program, but we're both faith, faith-based people. And there's some political reasons why it's not faith-based per se. Um, but would you try to model that life? But, uh, I had been questioning probably for a month, six weeks on why I was where I was. I had, uh, been a, a police academy instructor for the previous eight years uh, and got transferred out of that job, went back to the streets. Um, during that, going back even farther, when I went to, to the academy as an instructor, I was a kind of a typical cop, big arm, little leg cop, you know, with <laughs> decent in the uniform, stretched the sleeves and stuff. But if you could run more than a block, you probably got away from me. I had to call my buddies. Um, so, uh, but I went into the academy and the, the captain, who was not a fitness guy, said, oh, you're a big guy. And the guy that just left is uh, the fitness guy. So you're going to be in charge of fitness. Apparently, we do love, uh, CrossFit. So go learn about that. And that was 2008. So wow. you talk about where it was then. There yeah. was five CrossFit gyms in Denver. That's, uh, that's when four. I started. Yeah, yeah. Totally different scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, watching you back in the, in the game. But, um, <laughs> I have the MRIs to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went to the, went to the level one, um, made the mistake of raising my hand when they said, do we have any first responders or military? I'm like, yeah, right here. And you know, gave them some of that. And, uh, so first lunch break, I, I didn't know anything about it. I had a buddy, Dan Andrews. I think you know Dan. Oh uh, yeah. From front range days. Um, I saw him doing some pro- CrossFit and getting small, uh, flipping, I saw his videos, flipping tires and stuff. I was like, that looks easy. No big deal. Went to the level one was learning a lot that first half a day and already impressed. And they said, we're going to do this workout. It's called Fran. Um, do, you know, 95 pound thrusters and all this stuff. Um, if you need to scale, go over there. And I was like, 95 pounds, I, I curl 95 pounds. It's not a big deal. Uh, so I didn't go over there as I should have um, and scale with a 10 minute time cap. So at the 10 minute, nine minute, nine and a half minutes, everyone's done except for me and the other cop. And, uh, <laughs> Everyone's going, come on, officer, you can do it. You're, you know, you can come on. And I was like, who are you people? What is happening here? When I didn't finish, you know, I was in, I think it was in the round of nine, if I remember right. Um, just gasping on the floor and, and thinking, I need more of this, whatever this just was. Um, cause all these people could do it. And I hope they all seem to be good people. So that's nice. Um, yeah. but, uh, I need some more of this cause I thought I was fairly fit and I'm apparently not. So all that to say, that gets me into CrossFit. I go uh, try out my new skills on a bunch of recruits and in-service cops and make my mistakes in coaching and, and learning and then opened a gym in 2009 uh, and ran that for the next six, seven years until I transferred out of the academy. And that didn't, uh, going back to the street, just didn't work. Uh, I wasn't doing it to make money. So I had myself and a couple of guys that helped me coach, but it just wasn't sustainable as a street cop to call my clients and say, I'm on a homicide. Sorry, I, I can't make it to class type thing. So I had to shut it down. And this is right at the time that I started asking God, like, what, what was this? Why did I just waste six, six, seven, eight years of my life getting all these skills? I thought that was going to be my path forever, gym owner, all this stuff. And uh, that's when Kevin reached out about his son. And I was like, okay, God, I hear you. Like, either be who I say I am a person that, you know, has this oath to help and, and all this stuff. And I'm putting people into the system with the goal that they, the correctional system helps correct. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which we all, even back then I, I recognized was not wholly true. You know, uh, correctional system, I've met some wonderful people and their leaders and things that are wanting to see change, but it's been around for a couple hundred years and it's hard to change that stuff. But yeah. so I had this opportunity to step up or shut up. You know, stop saying you're this great person that believes in fitness and all that CrossFit can do and, and that you're here, here to help anybody regardless of their stat, status um, or going to prison and to meet this guy. So so I went in and I met him and uh, I could see the, the, the four guys that I met with initially wanted to help change that community. So so we just started. We just started doing some workouts and people started looking at us and trying to figure out what we were doing. And the administration started looking and I asked if I could have a class. Uh, they said, yeah, sure. You, you and those four guys can have a class. I said, uh, can I have 10? Um, and they said, well, four guys, only four can gather on the yard or they get dispersed and in prison getting dispersed. It's quite often a, 
a beanbag round or, or something from the guy on the roof watching them, um, okay. you know, and, and, and they got reasons for that. And that's, it's valid. So even that I had to, to have a class of 10 on the yard was a thing, you know, and I brought a whiteboard and I set it up and dude on the roof was watching and I wasn't altogether unhappy that he was watching because <laughs> I was a cop in a prison, you know, um, but I was already feeling safer than, than that sounds um, because of these guys that I, that I was working with. So, so we had a class and it went well and we had another class and it grew and um, I asked if we could maybe have a competition inside and they said, uh, okay, but why and what? And the, the, the inside guys had wanted to do this competition actually to raise money for the staff gym that, because they had a better gym at this point than the staff. The staff didn't have hardly anything. So we raised, I think, $2,000 and bought the staff uh, some CrossFit stuff and a treadmill because they wanted a treadmill. But um, at that competition, I brought in, I think, 40 people from outside. And okay. there was probably 30 or 40 uh, correctional staff lined up against the back wall waiting to see what that was, how this was going to go. You know, because it was men and women. It wasn't just yeah. guys coming in. We, we brought in some volunteers by that point. And it just happened really organically. CrossFit just did what it does, you know. Um, and then we started asking some questions. We said, well, I can't be here all the time. I was going out a couple of times a week. Um, and it's a two-hour round trip. So what if we got these guys trained up? So wrote Dave Castle, wrote CrossFit headquarters a letter um, saying, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. And... Could you maybe send in some trainers for a level one? And apparently the, the story uh, goes that it, it made it to Dave Castro. And he said, where, where is it? And they said, Colorado. And he said, yeah, send them. So they sent uh, uh, a couple of guys and uh, they went in with just pencils and uh, whiteboard things. Couldn't take their computers and all that stuff and did a level one. And now there's been several um, and level twos uh, inside of prison. So now CrossFit staff regularly going in there. And doing these things so all that to say i didn't have a plan to introduce this i just went in to, to help this small group of guys mm -hmm. and then it grew to be this thing uh, and it's it's really magical it's changing lives i'm hearing from guys that i've never met um how how this has changed their lives i've ever gotten out and, and even inside you know i get outreach from guys inside all the time of, hey i'm at this i'm at this program um, can you see if I can have some kettlebells or something? And, and we still do. So yeah. Did I answer the question? Forget yeah, I a long time. So. Absolutely. Well, you got that cardio now. So I know <laughs> once I pull the yeah. string, we're going to go like the rest of us. Um, yeah. it, no, I, I think that that answered it phenomenally well. And I do want to clarify, um, when the staff came in, were they training, uh, any of like the, the prisoners, if that's the correct terminology to be level one, or is it just the other staff that was getting certified to be the level one? No, it was all the uh, offenders, insiders, residents. Okay. I call I call the guys that in, in our program we call them insiders. We get the insiders, insiders. And outsiders. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, it was all the insiders that were. We had ten at that first level one. CrossFit wrote off two of those seats, gave us two free seats, and we raised all the money ourselves. You know, um, yeah. CrossFit uh, CrossFit Journal has a couple of articles on that one. Andrea came out and did a, a great couple of stories on that, and. Uh, it was it was interesting reading the the comments on social media because you know I was a cop and there was this thing and how was this going to play out now that it was known and you know I had a hesitancy to bring it up at the police department because I was I get a question of do you really want to make bigger stronger faster criminals as a cop and it's like no I don't I want to make bigger stronger faster humans yeah um, through CrossFit that does all these other amazing things um, and they're pretty big and strong and fast anyways. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. they're not yeah. the guys that want to be big and strong and fast. They, they're, they're big and strong and fast. So, um, but yeah, so we, we just had 10, uh, insiders for that level one. And, uh, it was amazing. Uh, um, Jason McDonald was one of the, the, the trainers that came in, he's a UFC fighter. They, they didn't mess around when they sent their staff. They sent a, <laughs> a UFC fighter and, uh, Eric O'Connor, who was at my level one way back in the day, you know, another guy handled himself pretty well. Um, so they sent in a couple of, uh, kind of heavy hitters for that first level one. Uh, but yeah, it was all insiders. And we do, um, we do have officers, correctional officers that work out right alongside the guys. Uh, Dean Williams, the former director of all of Colorado's, uh, DOC who just, uh, retired January. Um, he's always had a, he was a, the same thing in, in Alaska. 
and he liked his staff to work out. Um, do, he had a running club in Alaska and, and at CrossFit. He wanted his people working out with the guys inside because, you know, there's there's got to be a separation there between CO and, and insider. But if they can see each other as humans, then yeah. that, that eliminates a lot of the, the other stuff, right? So yeah, we've got COs that just jump into the workout with the guys. Um, we don't have any, any actual uh, CO level ones through our program. It's all offender led. There's oh, a, cool. The, okay. And our current program as well. That was true of the old one, and that's true of the new one. Um, in our in our reintegration spaces, it's going to tend to be a, a mix of civilian led, outsider led, and insider. Because if there's no level one at the halfway house or transitional housing space, then it'll be us. But if we get somebody passing through Manny or, or uh, there's a guy Lane that just got out, you know, the, these guys passing through these spaces, and then hopefully after two coming back to to coach. Um, but yeah, it's, it's led by these guys, and that's a huge piece of it. There's a lot of programs that are outsiders coming in to talk at these guys about how they could do whatever. And they haven't lived that experience. They don't know the struggles of that uh, at that internalized place. You know, I've been in prison now going on five years doing this work, and I still wouldn't try to say I know anything about what it's like to live in that place. Um, right. I know, I know what it's like to help run a program and, and get over administrative hurdles and that kind of thing, but we have it purposely offender led um, because these guys know each other. Um, it gives a legitimacy to it and it's getting them job skills. You know, yeah. um, CrossFit's not like a thing you can get out and get a 40 hour week job and um, just be fully sufficient, but it's a thing that you can get out, get in the community and have a part-time job and get your free membership yeah. and make some extra money and, you know, I still coach at a gym here in Monument, uh, CrossFit 7070, and my free membership, and you know, a little bit of extra uh, cash for CrossFit shirts and shoes and stuff. There you go. Um, so, yeah, it's it's offender led, and all of our our trainings are, and we'll be doing that, continuing to do that inside and through that reintegration space. You know, we're, we're working out this new space uh, with uh, CrossFit headquarters and, and everybody involved. And we're trying to figure out how to to work. This one, we are actively in Denver Community Corrections uh, Impact Center. Okay. Um, it's a halfway house on the actual Denver County Jail facility. They repurposed some space that wasn't being used for uh, transitional housing, which is a really neat thing. And we go in and do, we, we do classes in there. And, um, so we're, we're figuring out this new space, but it's exciting again. Um, yeah. you know, I, bec- I become this administrator of this big thing that I didn't want to be. I'm, I'm not very smart. I'm, I'm, I'm moderately strong. I'm, I'm a decent coach. You know, um, does somebody have to be the head? So I, it was me, but I, yeah. I brought in everybody could, and I still do. You know, I, I lean heavily into Manny and the rest of our board. My wife um, is on our board, and she's way smarter than me. So uh, well, I look to her for administrative stuff. Yeah, so much of it is that connections and community. And Manny, I'm really interested to hear because the community, I, I, I always say like you show up for the fitness and you stay for the friends because the community is such amazing humans. Like the best thing about CrossFit, and I would say it, is, it attracts my varsity humans, the people, the hard chargers, the ones that are wanting to level up. And when you go in, it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire, if you're walking out of a tough situation, if you're a mother of four or whatever, it's a complete equalizer. You don't know, everyone's in gym clothes everyone's got the same workout even if you're modifying or whatever we're all sweating and kind of bleeding and complaining about the same stuff and once you're tired everything goes away like you don't see anything but the person next to you and then you're like in that bonding space so from that i could totally see how you know you're you're walking out of a situation of incarceration or whatever and then you can work your way into these other situations in community and then people can see you as a human before your linkedin resume or whatever else and i can see how opportunity can even open up from that and the life skills that Come, just from the discipline and everything else. Uh, Manny, I have t- uh, t- three younger brothers. One was coming out of the military. One other one played lacrosse in college like myself. And the, the one, I'm the oldest. He's the second oldest. He's like, you and Todd need to go do CrossFit. We were like, what the hell is that? Go do it. I looked it up. It was like 50 pull-ups. I was like, oh, hell no. I was like a top 20 D1 athlete. I couldn't do a pull-up. But we went in and um, of course, my military brother was like, it's silly, but just go do it. You do this kipping thing and it's not real because he had like very military traditional mindset. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's how we got into it. So I'm super curious <laughs> in your experience, how coming from, I can see how the community was a complete draw in the discipline, but how did you feel about CrossFit in general coming from that military mindset? Well, and I think, I think 
I think it, I just transitioned right into it, to be honest with you, because I think especially once I had got the education, earning my CFL one and I understood the different engines and modalities and things like this, I, I was already to a certain extent, especially in my military career hitting a lot of these components, hitting, hitting that okay. oxidative state, going for a run. Cause I worked a lot with, I got chosen, I was a personal security officer for two and three and four star generals. So I controlled all their air and ground movements, handled all their security, their vehicles, their personnel. And, uh, and so, you know, working with them, a lot of, a lot of times they're runners. So, I mean, I've ran a marathon with three star generals. So I was already hitting a lot of those different oxidative states. They want to go in and lift, do some heavy lifts. We're hitting those, those, uh, phosphogen, uh, you know, motor, and then, and then we're doing metabolic conditioning and a lot of HIT training naturally in the military. So I think maybe I wasn't as educated once I got my CFL one and I put all the terminology kind of together. I was already kind of naturally doing a lot of the, a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the different modalities when I was in the service and I didn't even realize I was doing it. So yeah. I think uh, really getting the education and understanding the program, the programming I was doing was a, uh, I was already kind of doing CrossFit, you know. So it was a smooth transition for me. And like you said, I think. Uh, there were just so many parallels I found in in the CrossFit community, but also in prison. I, I think uh, I think there's just a lot of a lot of parallels to military life, that kind of structure um, to prison and CrossFit. So it was really cool for me to kind of experience that on the inside of bringing all that all that together. And I think you're exactly right. I think it's a ripple effect on how it on how it impacts impacts men's lives, right? Because yeah. now you're dealing with volunteers, you're having to be more social, you're having to have these interactions. And, and not only that, but I think it just provides so much hope when you see those volunteers coming in. Wow, they're here to work out with us. They're here to work out with me. And just remembering that hope, you know, I wanted to provide that. So two weeks after I got out of almost a five year sentence, I went right back into the prison I was at with my wife. And uh, we met with all the guys and, and, and we did some workouts. We did, uh, we ran our veteran group. So it was just a great experience and you're exactly right. I feel like uh, just taking a holistic approach, CrossFit really contributes greatly to multiple, uh, you know, aspects of, of people's lives. Well, and I, and I, I don't want to sound basic in saying this, but if, um, if you've ever been around someone coming even out of a tough situation or maybe doesn't have like this traditional education background of college or whatever, perhaps you've been incarcerated, sometimes you have to mine the gold, kind of like you're saying you had the skill set, but it wasn't necessarily labeled in a certain way. Some of this and I'll say as best I can, criminal activity is very strategic. There's a lot of life skills yeah. in strategic partnerships in you know, running systems or making sure, I mean, it's not just for <laughs> these casual, like some of it's very sophisticated systems and these are extraordinary business skills. So I think sometimes, and tell me if I'm wrong, it's almost like taking those skills and repositioning and restructuring because they're still valuable. What are your, what yes. are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think you're exactly right. And I think that's why it's, that's why I have such a heart for this, right? Because uh, that's why I went into that out because I feel like my military brothers I went overseas with and I served with are almost I'm almost as connected with some of my brothers that I suffered through some of these workouts with. And I yeah. established the CrossFit program at Sterling and 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 we helped start the veteran pro you know, I'm I'm just as connected with some of these men. So I think you're exactly right. Um I'm sorry, I, I got blown up. I have a TBI. Where were we going? What would you ask? Um, that's funny. My, uh, we should have a whole conversation about neuro performance. That's, that's actually some stuff relating with turmeric and tequila. Uh, but just basically how like some of these life skills, I think people that don't come from traditional backgrounds and I love for our younger people, um, not everyone's just run into college and getting the big bill. They're doing trade schools and some other stuff. But like, I think people discount some of their life skills as they grow up, whether it's considered bad behavior or good behavior. Yep. So, you know, it's just, it, 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 you sometimes you to take it and just reposition it, reposition the perspective, yep. make it yep. legal. Um, but then, but, uh, empower people with like you you're probably starting more ahead than you think like you didn't yeah. think you necessarily had all this knowledge but you actually did you were living it already we just kind of had to rebrand it into crossfit terms and you were already like 10 steps ahead well and i think you're exactly right and i think that's what's exciting for you know i have a i have a pretty strong pulse on a lot of the re-entry space and inside we go inside a lot and i think you're exactly right and that's what's encouraging for me is just seeing a lot of my a lot of a lot of really positive and good guys coming out the right people coming out of prison and uh really maximizing that potential and and being rewired and and just and just creating a whole nother foundation and like you said create you know just tapping into the true potential that yeah. things they're capable of doing in a positive way and pushing forward in a positive manner and i, and I have so many con you know contacts out here of guys that have gotten out and they're doing exactly that and that's what's encouraging i mean i think that's what it's going to take to hopefully change a whole entity like aaron was saying that there's just deep rooted things that that have come over time because of the ways of the system but i think it's mm -hmm. going to continue taking people getting out and uh 
with those strong foundations and doing the right thing and being rewired in a positive manner um, to uh, to really push this thing forward and, and really create some positive reforms and overall just make better men and women. I mean, that's what, yeah. we're, that's what we're going for. We just want better people out here. And in yeah. turn, that just creates a safer community in there and safer community out here. And that's exactly what we want. I love it. And it, as we get older as adults, you don't learn new stuff too often. Like I, like Aaron, I started CrossFit in 2008 and it was such an awakening of like, oh wait, I'm not good at something. Cause I'd played one sport for X amount of years and I was good. You know, we were a top 20 D1 athlete. I did get checked my freshman year. So humility is always, you know, one, one rep away, <laughs> but, um, but you know, learning, getting back into it, it's whether you're coming out of incarceration or you're just an adult human, I think it's really important for us to get back to learning something new and getting back into the mix of not being the best in the room or so comfortable with our families or our jobs or whatever. And like keeping those edges sharp so i think almost if you are kind of like ushered coming out of that situation and you have this opportunity whatever that mean may be i think is really incredible and the support is exponential like that 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 process of going through something of like uh evolution and having like somebody going through it with you is is pretty amazing did you guys feel evolution within yourselves as like founders and coaches like you're doing this nonprofit obviously for the greater good for other people but the evolution for you guys personally had to be very noticeable yeah, it's been, it has been really amazing. And you know, especially as a cop going into this space to do this uh, work and, and getting past that cop, criminal, incarcerated person thing. Um, I had early on, I think it was our second or third class at Lyman. Um, I had asked the, the core group of guys not to say I was a cop, just to, just to not put that barrier in the way. Um, they just knew I was a CrossFit guy, and that, that was true. I had on the gym and stuff, but uh, the second or third class, <clears throat> I felt comfortable enough. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring down that veil. And uh, at the end of the class, I said, uh, "Hey, uh, did anybody tell you guys that I'm a cop?" And uh, I mean, it was almost a gasp, and not almost. It was like, huh? like crap, kind of thing. And there was two guys that looked angry. Uh, yeah. One specifically, and, and I'd been around him a decent amount looked really angry. He kind of went off to the side and he sat down and I, I let him have some space and, and I went and sat down by him. I said, you, you all right? And he said, uh, no. He said, I'm pissed. Uh, I said, and it, what, what are you so pissed about? He said, because uh, I thought it was going to be that I lied to him or something like that. He's like, well, I hate cops. Uh, and he's like, I hate them all, but I don't hate you. Uh, yeah. You know, you've come in now uh, several times now and, and shown that you give a, uh, an ass about us and um, so he's like, so I'm conflicted and it was, it's easier just to hate all cops, uh, than to now, now what do I do? Like, well, how about this? Uh, you judge me on my character and I'll judge you on your character and, uh, and we'll move forward from there. And he's like, all right, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. like, it was easier to just hate everybody. <laughs> um, so that thing of, of seeing past that and the more, uh, exposure I have, yeah, I never, it, being a cop was never a personal thing as far as arresting somebody. I, I didn't judge them as good or bad. They are having a good or bad day. Um, but there was definitely cop criminal, mm -hmm. you know, thing. And that was still, um, so I was doing both these things at the same time. And I still went out, I arrested more people and I put more people in prison, but I could feel better about it because I was also helping those systems connect and that far end thing. Um, but that, that place of seeing everybody as a person um, has been strengthened. Uh, after I was 20 years in at that point, roughly, um, I, I probably had developed a callousness and a us and them mentality. Um, that's real common in law enforcement. It's just a thing you almost have to do. Um, but this helped break that down. And, and now I walk around a different person for sure um, from my involvement in this. And we see that with our volunteers that we take inside that come into the, the, the spaces we work in. I haven't had a single person come out and say that was bad. 99.9% uh, .9 say this was amazing. How can I help more? Um, it's just breaking down walls in both directions. Um, you know, guys like Manny touched on guys feeling cared for inside, you yeah. know, um, and Manny can speak to that more, but I've heard a lot of the stories of people feeling tossed away and, you know, we're rejected by society and especially tough in the military uh, guys talking to, there's a restoring honor program out at Lyman that's created by a bunch of incarcerated guys out there. And I was talking to their leadership and they said, it's especially hard for them because, you know, they were military soldiers, right? So they had this persona and they were protectors of society and all this. And now when they're incarcerated, that's gone kind of doubly. 
you know, they're not just a regular person walking around with no obligation to society. They took an, an oath and then to be incarcerated behind that. Um, and quite often through trauma and stuff, it doesn't, doesn't excuse it. I know Manny owns his situation and, and I haven't met too many, uh, veterans that are engaging in these programs that don't own their, their mistakes. Um, but there's so much of that. There's 200,000 incarcerated veterans in America at any given moment, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not okay. Yeah. You know, that's, it's statistically, it's a problem. It's, it says that there's, there's something going on with their military that is, that is, uh, problematic. Some guys are just guys. There's bad cops, there's bad, uh, veterans, you know, but mostly good cops, mostly good veterans and, um, the veterans that wind up incarcerated, you're seeing more and more, uh, trauma related issues. And, and mm-hmm. that's where veterans and veterans, uh, focuses and and what lions pride does and what i've I've done throughout this thing is we're in an alliance we're we're terming an alliance with uh vhv the veterans healing veterans and restoring honor programs in that i'm pretty good at crossfit i'm pretty good crossfit coach it's been doing 13 years or whatever um but i don't know anything about trauma but i know it's a problem and i know it exists and i know i need to be specialists in that um so with veterans healing veterans ron self the guy that started it all the way. So Manny brought it into Sterling there, but Ron recognized, yeah, fitness would be a great part for this. It's it's a thing veterans understand, but he's a, now a trauma specialist. He's got a, uh, if you get a chance, you might hear in this, uh, looks on his um, head talk, he did from inside San Quentin, which is okay. amazing. Um, but he created that program and he's a, a trauma specialist and he recognized he's not going to try and be a trauma specialist and a fitness guy. So uh, Lions Pride is kind of the, the fitness arm of veterans dealing with veterans uh, of their trauma arm. And when I, if I run into a veteran, I'm referring them right over to VHV. Um, you know, we've got uh, Dr. Anjali Nandi, a probation, a chief probation officer for a county here. And she's a trauma informed specialist. And she does for our coaches, she does a class where we talk about trauma so that we can recognize it and deal with the moment of it. But then when we get through that, we're making referrals to other things. I'm not trying to be all these things. You know, we, we're we in alliance with uh, different sobriety groups because I'm not trying to figure out how to do that work. You know, right. but I think what we need is an alliance to make a system. You know, they call it the criminal justice system, and it's not. It's a bunch of pillars. Like, there's laws are made by legislators, voted on by the people, enforced by the cops, adjudicated in the courts, and then corrections takes people and and does what they do. And, and those systems aren't working together. Uh, my big picture goal is to have CrossFit at the beginning of all that. Somebody's getting uh, arrested and locked up. They're already starting to hear about these programs. Um, if they're not guilty and they get released, great. Maybe they still look into it. But if they do get incarcerated, they've already heard about it. And they know to look for it. Um, and then it just keeps coming at them at every step of the thing. Um, so, if by the time they're released, they haven't taken it up, it's because they made a big decision not to because they saw it seven or eight times. And I think if we can tie this thread through this system and then I'm sure you've seen it, uh, Chris, I know man and I have of people getting healthier, start making decisions like, Oh, what if I didn't drink the night before the workout? And then I can beat Manny in a workout, which ain't going to happen. Manny's he's way, way better than me, but <laughs> no. uh, I could chase him, no. you know, uh, so, you know, people start making those decisions. What if I didn't drink? What if I didn't use yeah. drugs? What if I got a full night's sleep? What if I ate better? Um, and and that just starts to be this whole person thing. Yes. And we're just lifting a barbell is, you know, is what it looks like. But we're hiding a bunch of other stuff in there. Um, and if we can get that into this system, I think it'll start, people start reaching out within that system to their, to the theology program at the prison. Uh, and okay. mean it, not just checking a box like, oh, I found Jesus, can I have probation, you know, but, right. but actually find them or or a business degree or whatever. And if yeah. if they got a basic level of fitness in their head that they're, that they're chasing this fitness and wellness, that just, it starts to become this bigger thing. And then uh, I think we can, we can change the game through CrossFit coming into that early. Um, we can be a, a court diverting. Um, courts are trying more and more to divert not into jail but into other programs. You go, okay, you're going to go to your anger management. You're going to go to CrossFit. You're going to uh, just make that an option. You know, um, I think it can, can and will be a big game changing thing through these, these alliances that we can form and make a, a true system. So, 
I love it. Well, I have two questions. Number one, I I 100% agree and um, have been, in my own experience, one good decision leads to another. So I'm not a very like a structured human. I'm more creative, artsy, whatever. Um, but So like I like to be free. But the second you insert CrossFit or structure, so much has to go in for success, whatever that might be, to, to come through. So it, it kind of starts to reshape things unknowingly. And it's really nice because it still feels like it's your choice and your decision without someone coercively fu- pushing you in a direction. Um, so my question would be, do you see yourself approaching the larger business system of this, like whether that's going to, you know, DC and petitioning to get this as more like a law or, you know, somewhere written in the books or like, this is a formal step. Like, do you think you can go to that length or or was that something you'd want to be a part of? Yeah, I think we can definitely get there. I know, uh, veterans doing veterans, Ron, uh, the founder of that, he's, he's on some federal task force level stuff. I mean, kind of uh, graciously bringing us along with them in that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. As a, a, a goal would be to get into those programs, to get yeah. into funding. And, and we've gotten great response from corporate, the corporate world. Um, Noble was a sponsor, gave us, geez, 300 something pairs of shoes Love it. Yeah. Um, that, that have gone into to prisons. Um, Ascent Protein gave us a, a bunch of prize money and prize packages for uh, our competitions. So yeah, there's there's definitely um, big, much bigger picture stuff and legislative yeah. things certainly um, kind of tickling the brain out here. Yeah, when we get when we get some data, you know, there's a lot of data on fitness and mental health, mm-hmm. um, and now we just got to bring that data pool, pull the data pool from this. Um, population to show what it's doing on recidivism. There's great programs. There's a guy, Ian Acker in Utah, that's done a bunch of great work um, with his population. So he was incarcerated and has a, and there's music program. There's all this stuff, but part of his thing is fitness. In Ohio, there's Expanding Horizons, which is a juvenile program that uses CrossFit. And they've got the state paying full price for uh, juveniles on probation to go to uh, CrossFit gyms with their PO, with their parole officer. And they're paying for both of them. To go and they they flip the numbers upside down. They're like a seventy plus success rate instead of seventy plus failure rate. Um, so more and more data is coming out of fitness and, and CrossFit specifically because of the community that it builds is different than any, any other fitness entity that I've ever uh, seen. So um, yeah. as we get more of this data, I think we can then start approaching courts and governors and legislators and say, yeah, let's let's pour some money into this. Every person yeah. you don't incarcerate, you know, if they say it costs forty, fifty thousand dollars a year to incarcerate somebody, it costs what, seventeen hundred and fifty dollars for a basic uh CrossFit gym membership. If that can help them not uh go back into prison, you saved I'm not good at math, was that thirty eight thousand five hundred dollars? Um you. you know, seems seems like a good deal. Yeah. So I, I think it's I think it's on the near horizon to be able to kinda to make those things happen. I love it. I well, it's it's so huge. My goal. I mean, I've talked about this a lot from day one on Two American Tequila, and a big reason I started it was to disrupt the narrative for everybody, but our young people in particular. And I always say, like, I wish high schools would talk about relationships, finance, nutrition, fitness, like <laughs> algebra, and all this. Like, okay, but there's an app for that. Like, we don't. No one's. I mean, whatever. If you're doing a specific job for that kind of stuff, fine. But really, like this really like base life skill situation, and it's phenomenal because not every kid starts from the same starting point. I mean, you know, some some young people really start with no skills, injury, trauma, all this stuff. It's really not an equal playing field. But if our systems, wherever they may fall, can provide some of this life skill education and allow them to go through the process for it versus like this coercive situation of here's what you do, here's how you learn, here's what you the goals are. I think it would change everything. So I'm, I'm just such an advocate of you guys gracefully disrupting the system. Like as you said, it's been around for a couple hundred years, change is slow. Uh, but it's pretty powerful if you can change one person's, one person from the inside's narrative about cops. I think that one example in itself is worth all of this. Clearly we need you know a bigger tidal wave of change but i really think just that shift in that narrative is really really huge and cops don't have 
a positive PR campaign right now in the world. Like we're in some really tough times for for law enforcement. So it's that's a hard narrative to change, especially if you've grown up with y'all as the enemy. It's it's hard to disrupt. So again, it's not even really about disrupting that specifically. It's just the uh, opening up the opportunity that things can be different, things can change. To not judge right away, to provide opportunity. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, Michelle Obama says, you know, it's hard to hate anything up close. So when you get in front of someone, you get to know them, even if you don't like who they are or you've traditionally not accepted them once you get to see the human side you're like oh well maybe maybe i don't hate cops maybe i don't maybe i will judge you on my character um and you'd be surprised i think our kiddos are better about that than adults uh because we get set in our ways and we don't like to change um but it, that's that's pretty fascinating what tell me now like you talked a little about your goals but what are some immediate big things you guys have events coming up or um exciting stuff you want to share that that's happening right now well, um, getting into that Denver Impact Center was our first uh, our first step back inside. Um, so that's been great. We definitely have uh, fundraiser uh, goals on the near horizon because uh, there's no equipment in there. We're bringing in what we got from our garages, the, the main coaches that are going in with us from uh, area gyms here uh, in the Denver metro area. So we'll have some there. Um, Manny's buddy and my friend Lane that just got out is in a, a – the transitional housing space down here in, in Springs area. Um, they've got a need, Pier 1 downtown to reach out to have a need. So, yeah, some fundraiser level things. We'll we'll figure out how that looks. Um, it was real popular with the previous program to do these these uh, events inside of prisons. You know, we had people paying a couple hundred bucks to go inside a prison and work out and get a T-shirt. <laughs> um, in the transitional space, it's a little different, but we still have access. So, and we'll see how that looks. Um you know, just regular fundraising, buying and selling shirts and, and that kind of thing will, will happen as well. Um, and I know we're trying to coordinate an event hopefully here for Memorial Day. Yeah. So um, definitely we're collaborating with our veterans and uh, the inside community, um, Lions Pride Fitness, Veterans Healing Veterans. We're going to try and run like almost a hybrid Memorial Day event where we're, we're bringing in veterans. We're telling them about their stories of adversity, their challenges and and how they overcame that. And a lot of times that's through physical activity, CrossFit, working out and uh, how they've restructured their life and they've bounced back from uh, some of that, some of that adversity and, and speak on those stories of just perseverance and resiliency and not just veterans, but also guys that are in these reentry spaces. Cause there are several guys that are doing really, really well out here. And, uh, and we want to, we want to make sure we bring those stories inside and, and, and do a workout behind it, make it fun. And, and so that's what we're hoping to do. Um, uh, I think we're trying to staple down a date working with Aaron and some of the facilities right now. I think May 21st. So any military or CrossFitters want to be a part of a really special event, we're going to try and shoot for something like that. I love it. And if someone wants to get involved on the volunteer side or maybe, um, like you said, your friend had a son, like if they want to reach out to you guys to get a loved one involved or anything, or maybe they have programs or sponsors, what would be the best way to contact you guys? Uh, well, the website is lionspridefitness.org. We're on, I think all the socials are the big ones, Facebook, Instagram. I got a TikTok. I don't do anything on there, but i um, <laughs> too old for TikTok, but I'll, I'll have, we'll There's find somebody time. to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Outsource <laughs> um, the alliances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Facebook and, and Instagram are pretty good, but AllianceBrightFitness.org has a contact us uh, page as well. Um, and we do need, that's a big thing um, that we have a need for is coaches for these spaces. Uh Kevin O'Gar, I'm sure you know Kevin, oh, uh, yeah. Denver uh, superhero. Uh, he is the CrossFit affiliate manager for the entire like West, except for half of California or whatever. Um, and he's, uh, we're talking to him about getting the word out to all these things because we got guys that released to where they released to. You know, if we had six gyms in Denver, we'd get a guy released in Pueblo where we still don't have a place for him. So okay. what we want to have is is the CrossFit community understanding and knowing this program and, and, and the potential and these people that are coming out and give them a, a place to, to come to. You know, we're, humans are social. Or aside from the sociopaths, we all uh, want some community, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if people coming out of prison, they want community. And if they can continue this um, CrossFit community or, or hear about it inside and reach out into it outside, uh, that can replace the, the one that helped them go inside. Quite often, that's a societal uh, thing. Like I said, some kids are starting off, you know, way behind the, the starting line that I got to start from. Mm -hmm. So they go back into that same community, um, they're going to have probably the same problems. So um, we want to have a network of, 
uh, affiliates, CrossFit affiliates and CrossFit coaches that um, will work in these spaces. Somebody gets released to a new halfway house we're not in. Uh, it'd be great if I could reach out to somebody in Oregon and say, hey, have you heard of you know these programs inside? Would you be willing to start one there? There's a guy in, uh, or a girl and would you go in there? So we're trying to build that network. You know, we're... We're also trying to make this a paid thing. Uh, there was a summit out in Ohio that I got to be a little part of. And one of the guys there kind of broke down this wall and said, yeah, I just want everybody to understand it's okay to make money doing a good thing. You know, because you feel like part of your val validity is taken away if you if you get a paycheck for doing the good thing. It's like, no, it's, we people doing good things should be the ones making all the money. Absolutely. You know? um, the, the middleman just sticking his hand out to take part of your money for not really doing anything, you shouldn't get anything, but the person actually changed lives. It's okay to make some money. So we're, we're trying to get CrossFit coaches paid. Um, and that'll be a big step too. And I think we can, uh, that, that program expanding horizons in Ohio, it broke down a lot of walls and Matt Schindeldecker and uh, David Wagner who start that, um, through CrossFit Crave, they've done a bunch of work and gotten that funding through that government. So I think we can look at doing that here too. 25 bucks an hour for a CrossFit coach. That's, you know, coming in to do these, it's not unreasonable. Um, and it allows them to do that good thing, but also, you know, pay their bills and, and that kind of stuff. So absolutely, um, we hope to get that funded through grants or, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, so my wife works um, in some areas that uh, she has access to some information about grants and stuff. So we're going to, we're going to track a bunch of that stuff down, but we need this network of people willing to receive these people, uh, coming out and help support them. So you know, we're, we're sticking our tentacles out um, in a couple of directions. Money and people are the big ones, you know, time, yeah. talent, and treasures is what we need. <laughs> um, and, uh, and when you ask, it's amazing in the CrossFit community, especially how much of each of those you get from people oh, um, for sure. when they see, when they see the value uh, and they see the lives we've changed. That's amazing. Well, if you're a CrossFit gym and you're listening, please reach out. It is a very tight family. Uh, we've been in it for a very long time, the three of us, but it's amazing to see how many people stay in it. You know, it's 12 X amount of years and it's a lot of the same people doing a lot of the same things. It's really, really good humans that are mission driven. They're purposeful and they're, you know, trying to walk in alignment with whatever that purpose is and being impactful. I completely advocate and echo your statements around getting paid. I know some of the biggest charities in the world, there is some shade around 501c3s. Let's be real. Um, where some of this money goes, but the good ones doing it right, paying for great people. If you can pay someone a hundred grand a year and they're bringing in a million, it's, it's the way to go. So there is some disruption in our own minds about nonprofits and ones that are really doing it correctly. Um, but yeah, you want to get good people doing, doing the right thing. So I hope that the funds come that way. And I hope on the flip side, the more 10,000 foot view of this of, is showing up for humanity in the right way and staying open-minded. But also if you've got like a dream or a pull towards something like these guys, you know, like Aaron, you know, he didn't, he kind of was asking, what do I do? Now? next it didn't have a hard plan but just pulled and just let one step kind of lead to the next and let it unfold i i really hope our especially our young people but all people can hear you know you don't have to have it figured out just listen to your gut go in that direction and trust universe god madonna as i say on tumor Gatita, that as you take that step the stone will be there and i th i just think we get so locked into like well, what's the plan and what's the funding yes you need to have some of those things but sometimes you just gotta put one foot in front of the other and trust and i mean this is the perfect example of that you're kind of following your gut and, and going with it and look at this magic that's unfolded without this even being in the plan or on the books or anything. Um, I don't know. I just think I just a give you guys a round of applause and a pat on the back because it's so amazing. But I think it's it's working and it's happening and it's thriving because it's real and it is necessary and it's right on time. Like this is what our world really needs. I won't drop a bunch of cheesy cliches on you, um, but it, but it but it really does matter. And I think just disrupting these big systems in the right way is pretty magical. And if we can all get ripped doing it, like that's pretty awesome. So, um, <laughs> do you guys have anything final notes? It can be about the business or the fitness or the mission that you wanna leave the crew with i wanted to point at over at veterans healing veterans also so I, I love that that group and those guys and their mission so that's veterans healing veterans.com is their website um so reach out to them so that we're their fitness arm but if you're a veteran or know a veteran and i mean we all know some um and you have any kind of issue that this would help um, reach out there at manny if you want to talk to that some more but i, I didn't want to go past uh, giving out that website and then restoring honor is the, the program in line and uh they're worthy of of a look as well they've got a facebook group i think they just got their website up. Um, but restoring honor is that awesome. one 
we'll I'll link all these um, lionspridefitness.org. We'll, we'll of course link them on there. But yeah, definitely check them out. Manny, did you have anything to leave us with? I uh, really appreciate time, Kristen. I appreciate uh, everybody that's listening. I think uh, just like you said, just a, a call to the community and really building that network because that's what we hear a lot of, especially in this space, is that these uh, kind of environments and healthy uh, organic environments are created in a strong way uh, through CrossFit, especially on the inside. And, uh, and we want to make sure that we're creating those same uh, environments out here and creating a seamless transition so we can continue pumping out um, just, just healthy human beings. And that's, yeah. what, that's what we want. Amen. Well, I appreciate you guys' time and energy. I love to see not only this happening, but kind of see it grow. And I think it's so cool that, you know, fitness has led to us to being better humans and then in turn impacting and inspiring other humans to level up. Uh, it's a pr pretty magical thing. And we just showed up to do fake pull-ups so <laughs> i think that's pretty cool i'm just kidding I'm, i i i can only just cross it because i've done it so long and i love it so much but i appreciate you guys time and energy thank you for joining me like i said i can't wait to see how this grows maybe in a year we should check back in and talk about the research that's come out the milestones you've made the dc situations you guys have disrupted um and and just check in and see how the the progress has happened yeah, yeah love it I'm absolutely good yeah, thank you I love it. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.